This video is the next instalment in telling the story of the broadband problems in Gungahlin. Russ Gillen has been a sensational advocate on behalf of the residents in that area about the ongoing broadband problems and I urge you to pay close attention to this video to gain a better understanding of how RIM technology has been used by Telstra and how that puts inhibiting effects on your broadband service and can in fact make sure that some people don't get an ADSL broadband service at all. Gungahlin has uh, quite a complex history when it comes to its broadband problems. In fact, it was in 1996, one of my first press releases as an elected senator for the ACT was criticising Telstra for scrapping their then uh, Gungahlin broadband project, which uh, way back then in 1995 was a project they were putting forward uh, that would take fibre to the home of 5,000 new homes in Gungahlin. That's quite extraordinary when you think about it. It's, it was 15 years ago and uh, unfortunately for Gungahlin residents, Telstra scrapped that pro uh, project uh, as the new federal government, the Liberal government, tightened up um, their bottom line and put pressure on Telstra going into the privatisation phase. So we were unfortunate to lose that, what would have been a groundbreaking project back then. Once that broadband project was scrapped, Telstra uh, I think right around the country uh, started cutting back their capital expenditure and for a whole range of reasons that meant the extensive use of remote integrated technology. The, this technology was used in Gungahlin uh, quite extensively and it has a broadband blocking effect as I'm sure many people are aware. Uh, we did our first community survey uh, back in 2002 asking Gungahlin residents what their service was like and uh, asking them to provide us with details about their service speeds. This came on the back of a public meeting around that time at Gold, Gold Creek School, which was really well attended. Other big news along the way was the opening of the new Crace Exchange. This was widely welcomed, and I remember Telstra promising that it would make a real difference. Unfortunately, Telstra continued to roll out remote integrated multiplexer technology which continues to inhibit uh, people's access to ADSL services. Some of you also may recall the scandal when other carriers tried to get access to the new Crace Exchange and Telstra put a great big padlock on the gate and uh, access was denied for another period. This wasn't anything illegal, but it was an example, I think, of what the industry knew as Telstra's passive gaming of some of the rules and regulations about the access regime. We did another survey in 2006 showing that there was still a huge percentage of Gungahlin residents who were on waiting lists for ADSL or were finding um, a great deal of uh, problems experienced with their actual guaranteed speeds or speeds that they thought they would be entitled to through the ADSL services that they did have. And finally, um, uh, where we're at now is on the you know, the eve of the MBN rolling out, I think there's a, a wonderful prospect that these problems will be resolved once and for all because the answer is not trying to manage Telstra's deficient copper network. Uh, the MBN, the National Broadband Network, is about a new fibre network, which I think would be the ultimate solution to solving Gungahlin's broadband problems. So anyway, over to Russ, who's going to go through some of the detail of the technical aspects of what is going on in Gungahlin with your... Um, connectivity uh, with broadband and uh, how the impact of RIMS um, has affected customers. Gungahlin is unique in Canberra in the fact that when Gungahlin was rolled out they rolled out RIM technology into Gungahlin and it's it's very rarely used in other parts of Canberra but it is prolific in Gungahlin. There's 75 RIMS in Gungahlin which all go back to a single um, exchange at Crace and those 75 RIMs are essentially RIM uh, ADSL blocking technology. So for every 200 odd phone lines that they terminate in the RIMs, there's only anywhere between 90 and 140 type um, ADSL ports available. Um, also when they put those RIMs in, the backhaul, the actual fibre they put in between the RIM and the exchange was significantly slower because it was only to deal with voice. And now they're trying to pump more data and those sorts of things across it, it's becoming difficult for um, that technology to keep up the speeds because, because of that technology limit, the backhaul isn't there and um, everyone's performance is therefore limited. Now, 
to deal with that, Telstra have actually dropped everyone's ADSL maximum sync speed down to two megabit a second. Now I'm paying for up to eight, up, up to eight, but they are actually capping it down at two. They capped it down at about three and a half, four a few months ago. They've dropped that cap again because they've they fully acknowledged that there's a congestion issue with those older rims. When a, someone raises a ticket, when someone calls out a congestion issue, when someone's on a waiting list, the communications path is difficult to, to work through. You have to work through the ISP as a user, who you have your commercial engagement with, to work out whether or not you're on a waiting list or when, or when how long that waiting list is. And then if there's a wholesale provider, in the case of where RIMS are deployed, there is, there is a wholesale provider. Um, your ISP then has to go to the wholesale provider on your behalf and find out what's going on there. Then the end user ends up not finding out a great deal at all of what's going on and they don't understand and they get frustrated. Now there are places in Harrison and Franklin where um, they have rolled out RIM, that CMUX technology as well, but when they put those, those devices in, they've put multi-gig backhaul in. So we're talking about extreme high speeds, still terminating 200 and 400 phone lines, but there is so much backhaul coming out of those devices that everyone has actually gets fair share of that available backhaul and, um, and, and actually they get good speeds, they get low latency and they get zero packet loss. Here in the old rims, We've got low, low download apertures, very high latencies, six and seven and eight hundred milliseconds to point of presence, or the first layer three hop, if technical speak. And um, the packet loss can be up to 16 to 20 percent um, packet loss during those peak times. Mm. Those congestion issues bring out a lot of, um, a lot of user experience uh, affect the user experience significantly. There's a lot of people out there who are using online gaming as, as uh, and the latency and delays with that communication causes dropouts from that, that game. And those things are subscription games, so people are paying for the right to play those things and they're not get, being able to get that experience very well. But it also affects things like voice over IP. High latency and packet loss affect voice over IP significantly. If we were to try and use voice over IP here, that phone wouldn't operate properly. We would talk and a second or a second and a half later I would get a response if I actually got a non-garbled response anyway. So that also affects things like video conferencing, um, other things like um, VPN, so people telecommuting, people um, working from home, um, they have difficulty doing that because those sorts of technologies don't deal with that that sort of low, low down, download um, high latency type connectivity. Hi. My name's Greg Wells and my family's lived in Ungarla for the past 10 years. For my family, accessing the internet is more essential than accessing a telephone these days. We use it for email, paying bills, job applications, schoolwork. We haven't used it to access the ABC. However, Gungahlin has extremely low internet speeds from mid-afternoon most weekdays after school and most of the weekend, making this very difficult, if not impossible. When I say slow, I mean slow. It can take ages to download your email. It can take over a minute to download even the most basic website page. And you can forget about anything with multimedia content like Big Pond or YouTube. This problem has been around for a number of years and I fail to understand it with over 30,000 people living in Gungahl and paying large amounts to access the internet that hasn't been fixed. It's been suggested that Next G is an alternative, but it's very expensive and with its low download limits, it's impractical for families. We've not only the worst internet in Canberra, but it's worse than many rural and regional areas and we'd appreciate if you could fix this problem sooner rather than later. Thank you. There's a set number of ports and a, if more people want access to that RIM ADSL then they have to, they're queued essentially in a waiting list. And it's only until someone disconnects a service, an ADSL service, is that the next person on that list can actually then take up that port. So people can be waiting a significantly long time for that turnover. I believe Gungarland should be prioritised for an early NBN rollout. Uh, for three, for three reasons. The first reason being um, the Gungahlin Town Centre 
is um, slowly dying due to the lack of uh, government departments and office space and it's purely due to poor communications in the area. The second reason one is to fix um, existing issues in the environment. There's a whole heap of people in this area who cannot get ADSL because they're on waiting lists. Um, the people who can get ADSL, the performance of ADSL is, is horrible. It, it doesn't work. Um, the third is um, purely based on the growth um, expected growth of Gungahlin, the largest growing area in the ACT. If our telecommunications um, uh, system isn't working now, as that growth continues to go over time, we're not going to have a sustainable um, network to cater for all these new people who are coming. So we need that addressed, and the only viable alternative to Telstra at the moment is NBN, and Telstra's not fixing the problem. So we're looking to the NBN to fix it.